So if she didn't breed, or if she did, you can't tell. The only way is to flush the uterus and, and look for the blastocysts. There's no other way. Now, short tail weasels make a permutation on this system. They have a similar reproductive cycle to the, to the long tails, except they become a classic example of why humans should not try to place their own moral and ethical judgments on animals. <laughs> okay. okay? Now remember that, that, that mane on the back of the neck of those, of those two females that were, that were seven weeks old in the photograph? Their eyes were shut, their ears were shut. Now when youngsters are that old, in short tail weasels, the mother becomes mother comes in season. She comes into estrus. She's ready to breed. A male comes to her nest, comes into the nest and breeds with her, and breeds with all of her female offspring. Hmm. They then have delayed implantation, like the long tails. Okay, so they are sexually mature before their eyes and ears are open. <laughs> then they go through a long dormant period and they give birth the same time their mothers do the following spring, coincident with their own first birthdays. <clears throat> but they had a long delayed implantation. It's a really cool system. Now, the way, now what, what, what's, what's cool here is long tails and short tails have a different way of trying, of responding to high vole populations than least weasels do. When the vole population is high, least weasels breed and breed and breed, okay? So they, they breed maybe twice in the summer, they might breed in the winter time. They're capable of responding immediately to a high vole population. Long tails and short tails can't do that. If the vole population is high this summer, a female can't produce more young because she bred last summer, remember? So what these guys do is they always have large litters fertilized. The average litter size for long and short tail weasels is about 10. And that's the number of fertilized eggs that are ready to implant. If during the winter time the vole population is really low and a female, long tail or short tail, is having trouble finding enough food, when spring comes, not all of her blastocysts will implant. During pregnancy, if she's having trouble finding enough food, she will resorb some of those fetuses. Once they're born, if she's having trouble finding enough food, she won't be able to lactate enough, produce enough milk to feed them all. So she'll lose some more. But if the vole population is high, she can produce 10, 12 youngsters. And if the vole population is low, then she might only produce one, two, three, something like that. So they're able to respond to changing vole populations by changing their reproduction in a very different way than the least weasels do. It's a really cool system. Now this is caused this has caused, I'll get to you Phil, this has caused short tail weasels a problem where they've been released in New Zealand because they're not native to New Zealand, but um, they, were, they like to eat native birds and they like to eat house mice there. And, uh, but they can really hammer the native birds when there's a high mouse population because when the mouse population goes up, the weasels produce a whole bunch of offspring the mouse population crashes, and the weasels eat a whole bunch of native birds, which is a, a real conservation problem in New Zealand. Okay. I'm wondering how you know all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it seems like you take a million weasels to figure this all out. Okay, I've live trapped a whole bunch of weasels. I have cooperated, I've, I got a cooperative research project now with, with, with a colleague in New Zealand. Um, I have read a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I mean, how does humanity? How know? does humanity know this? 
how do we know if it, um, having it, the animals in captivity and raising them in captivity? Uh, in captivity, we can put them. We we can give them um, different light cycles, and and that's how we've learned that light cycles. Uh, light cycles stimulate the, the change in in um, in coat color, and they also stimulate the um, reproduction and when they're going to reproduce. By looking at animals that have been killed. And in New Zealand, they've killed a whole bunch of short-tailed weasels. And you can look at the um, number of blastocysts, the number of embryos, the number of, of placental scars on the females when the mouse population is at different, different sizes. And you can, you can see that the, um, that the number of, of eggs shed is almost always high. The average is, is 10 and the 8 to 13 range is... is so we can, there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can, you can get this stuff, this kind of information. And it's really comes with like a piecemeal. A little bit here, a little bit there, but people have been studying these guys for, you know, decades and decades. Yeah. I wondered how many kids the mother has to feed 13 or whatever. She has about 10. And it's variable, and sometimes it's different numbers on different side, on two sides. <laughs> But but they have about ten teats. So if they had thirteen babies, then some of them would die. Or no, they don't all nurse at the same time. Oh. So you you, you can you, she can nurse up to about ten at once. But once one is full, it'll let go, and one of the ones who's hungry can latch on, and so they'll so they can they can just sort of shuffle teats that way. Dogs can do that, but cats won't. Cats choose a teat and stick with it, but dogs, um, they take whatever one they can get to. So we're, out of, we're out of time. I got about halfway through the slides. This is cool stuff because I didn't even get, didn't even get to Fishers and Martins. Um, but that's okay. There, there's just a whole bunch of neat stuff about these guys. It's easy to talk for a long time. I want you to skip ahead and show us the coolest thing of all. What, Fishers? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Leave that to you. Maybe we'll have to have you back next week. Can we have him back for six straight weeks? <laughs> His hair will turn off. Oh. Oh. This. Tempest in a teacup. <laughs> this is this is one of the young, uh, one of the um, short tail weasels, female short tail weasels that that we we raised 15 years ago, something like that. She was born in our house. Yeah. We, we got her mother from the Minnesota Zoo. And she had been bred when she was seven weeks old at the zoo. And so she came to us pregnant, turned white in the winter, then turned brown in the spring. And as she started turning brown in April, she implanted. And she had those two, those two kits that Concy had in her hand that she was drawing. And um, so here, we would let her loose in the bathroom with us. And here she, and I went in there with a cup of tea, and here she is in my teacup. <laughs> so do they get habituated to where they would pay attention to you like a cat or a dog would oh, somewhat yeah. or no? no. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All the weasels we've had in our house that, that have lived with us have been very keyed into us. Uh, first of all, they know we bring food. But they also know that, that they can play with us. They're really playful critters. Weasels have huge brains. For the size of their body, the brain, the brain is huge. Um, if you look at it, boy, I wish I'd brought some skulls. If you look at a dog skull or a wolf skull, fox skull, uh, you've got the, the rostrum is, is here, and, and, the, and the brain case is, is here. And the rostrum is real long, and the brain case is, is what? Well, it's the size of a brain case for a, a, for a dog. But um, for a weasel, the brain case is about like this. And then you've got this little muzzle here in front of it. With the, it the brain is huge. And it's, um, it ha the brains, for the size of the animal, have a lot of convolutions on them. And that appears to be correlated with, um, uh, with well, 
intelligence, if you, you know, the flexibility, the ability to, to deal with differing situations, uh, the ability to learn. So these guys have really big brains for, for, for the size of, of, of the body. We'll have you back, Sean. Excuse me? We'll have you back. I can go back and talk, talk about more of them, yeah. I, I just have one question I had. Yeah. You, you obviously become, uh, you have these critters living with you. They became attuned to you. Mm -hmm. You probably became attuned to them. You turned the lights off in, in the bedroom for a whole winter. Did you uh, or Kanzi see any physiological changes? I mean, did your hair turn? Uh, <laughs> But it didn't come back. Apparently. <laughs> and that happened when my daughter was 13. So, <laughs> and it happened in about as much time as it takes a weasel to change. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Roger. Yeah.